Hi, my name is Mary Ann Passator, and I'm a retired art teacher and commercial artist from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Uh, my husband and I came down here to live in Florida, found this wonderful museum, and decided to volunteer here, mainly because of what they do for the vets. And one of the first things that uh, I did was to start painting murals for them. This one is of the American Revolution, and I thought it'd be great to do the spirit of 76. Then I also looked at the mannequins and thought, you know, they're all store-bought mannequins. Let's make them look like the people they're supposed to be. So I've changed the faces on them. This is Paul Revere. And I've got, over here, we're going to go look at George Washington. And here's good old George, the father of our country. And we'll move down. Everything is in chronological order here. So the next one up is the Civil War. Now, when I was asked to do a painting for the Civil War, they suggested I do Antietam. And being from Pennsylvania, I was familiar with the bridge at Antietam, which is in Maryland. But we were afraid that people here in Florida wouldn't recognize this. And we wanted to do this particular bridge and the tree that you see there. It's called the witness tree because it was growing back in 1860 when the war took place. I put a few extra things in it, took a little artist's license. You see the flags in the sky, the lettering in the sunset, just to give you a little bit more educational experience as to what happened during the Civil War. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. We enter here, this is a mannequin of Captain Page. We have an airport here called Page Field. It's named after Captain, Captain Channing Page. And again, this is a mannequin that I worked on to change his pretty boy look to that of Captain Page. And back here, this mural, it's World War I. But this is really the very first mural that I painted for the museum. They had the idea of a kneeling mannequin that could be kneeling in the trenches. And that as you walked back toward the wall, you would feel that you were walking into the trenches of the war. And because it's World War I, I did it in a sepia tone, make it look, kind of look like an old photograph. And we'll continue on over to the next mural. We have a lot of vets here that are Korean veterans, a lot of Vietnam veterans. And before I start painting this one, I had asked some of the fellows, what should I paint for Korea? And they said, it was cold. And it took me back to the coffee stand and pulled out one of those little packets of sweetener that come in the blue packet. And he said, it was this cold. So that's why this hair all turned up being blue. I'm trying to make it look very chilly, and the mannequin is standing behind me over here on the uh, right-hand side is representative of the soldiers that fought at the Chosin Reservoir, and he's really the first mannequin that I did. You can come and take a close-up view of him because he was a very pretty department store mannequin, and I thought if he just spent three weeks at the Chosin Reservoir, surrounded by hundreds of thousands of Chinese. He's going to look a little ragged. So anyway, I fixed him up. What I do is I put plaster of Paris on their faces, and then I sculpt it, and then I repaint them. And I'll continue over here to the next one. Here again, we have a lot of vets from Vietnam. So again, I asked the veterans, what would I paint? What should I paint? And then they said, well, it's a jungle, but it was a beautiful country. You know, paint the mountains and the valleys and the little thatched hut uh, villages that they had there. Um, 
and make it look hot. So as I was doing the painting, I thought, my golly, this looks beautiful. I mean, this looks like a resort. I'd like to go there on vacation. But once I put the helicopters in and then put the rays coming down from the sky, it made it look hot and steamy. And I also felt that those rays could have a spiritual feeling to them too. Hopefully that whoever was stuck there during the Vietnam War was hopefully going to make it home. And then there are some mannequins in here too that I worked on. There's a wounded veteran lying down here. There are two Vietnamese uh, people, a young couple. We have a prisoner of war who's in a Vietnam cage. And they have all been doctored up so they look like they belong in, in the particular war scene. All right, we're going to move on to the Gulf Wars. I really did want to glorify the horrors of the war. I didn't want to show a lot of soldiers and, and wounded people, but I did want to show something that kind of replicated what went on during that war. So this one over here is Kuwait, and what came to my mind was the oil wheel, wells being on fire. And you know, Saddam Hussein lit fire to all those wells in Kuwait, and I was just trying to show the destruction and the heat of what went on in, in Kuwait. This one is the fall of Saddam Hussein's statue. And of course, when this took place, there were hundreds and hundreds of people in this square. But I just wanted to focus on the statue and the event. I think it was our Marine Corps that helped them pull it down. They put a tank there with a chain on it, wrapped it around the statue, and they used the statue over. And then this one over here in the corner is for Afghanistan. And one little interesting tidbit is when I was working on this, one of the young vets that was at the museum and a veteran of the Afghanistan war uh, was talking to me about the painting. And I said, I didn't quite know what to paint. I said, did I get it right? And he said, yeah, you did. He said, there was a lot of rubble. He said, but you should put in more garbage. And I said, what do you mean garbage? And he said, you know, garbage. So, I mean, you can't see it too clearly, but there are some water bottles and pieces of paper floating around. And he was happy that I stuck a few extra things into the painting. But there are two choppers up in the sky, picking up the dust. And of course, it's a very mountainous country. Okay, from here we're going to move. Well, we'll do the wall that's right here. It goes into our mess hall. This is the last mural that I worked on. The museum does a wonderful job of providing a place for vets to get together, a place of solace, a place where they can just relax and, and uh, talk to each other about what happened during the, the days in the military. And so this mess hall feeds several hundred vets every Tuesday. And we thought it would be appropriate to separate the mess hall from the rest of the museum. So I painted a concert hut and we titled it the uh, 40, 40, 4077 MASH mess hall. And uh, we've got some stacks of potatoes here and some potato soup cooking. And off in the distance, you can see the helicopter pad for when they light flight people in. And there's a chopper flying in. It's going to medevac some people out of here. So this is just to represent the mess hall. Now we're going to move down to World War II.